Karen Bryan for MMA Heat. I'm here at Dynamics Martial Arts in, actually, is it Brentwood now, Anthony? West LA. West LA. Thank you very much, Anthony Hardonk back there teaching. I've got Vladimir Matyshenko and Jared Hammond with me, and these guys both have fights coming up. Jared is fighting at UFC 140, taking on Costa Filippou. Yes, ma'am. That's right. Yes, ma'am. And Vlad, of course, you're at UFC 141, taking on Alexander Gustafsson. All right, so let's get started. First, Jared, I want to talk to you about your fight coming up. Um, it's another one for you at middleweight. How are you feeling about Costa and, and you know, just basically how are you feeling growing into being a 185-er? Uh, making, the, making the move to 185 was uh, the best decision I could have made. Uh, it's more of like a, a lifestyle change, I guess you'd say. It's not like, oh, I'm going to do this. It's for my whole life. Now, just to, with the foods that you eat and the nutrition that I had, I feel great. I should have done it a long time ago, but this is the way it is now. Um, and the move feels awesome. My, my cardio is, is, is perfect. Everything is great. And uh, you know, I've been really training and watching tape on Costa. And uh, I know his strengths and weaknesses. And, and I know where he comes from and the camp. And uh, my coaches have trained me very hard for this fight. And uh, I'm ready to go, man. Yeah, let's talk to you about this, Vlad. What, what have you been putting Jared through? Because I know you guys have been training together for a long time. Well, I think his uh, biggest thing he need to learn how to not get hit. <laughs> it says my, uh, you know, white hair whenever <laughs> when he's in his corner. But uh, he's in a great shape, and he always was in a great shape uh, physically. But I think, you know, timing and uh, distance it's uh, very important for him. Yeah, actually, I wanted to know what differences you've seen in him since he's gone down in weight. Has he gotten faster? Has he gotten better at certain elements of his game? Yeah, definitely. He improved last few years, you know, trem tremendously. And uh, you know, he's in that stage where. He's learning every day, and he's getting better and better. So you say you know Costa's strengths, and, and I saw him fight at 133 in Philly mm -hmm. the, this past August. So what do you see are the most dangerous elements of his game? Um, oh, you've got a mic. Let me do he, that. Uh, he, uh, he, uh, you know, he's got a solid chin. Like, uh, Jorge cracked him a few times, and, uh, and Nick Atone cracked him a few times really good. Um, and he seems very strong, as just saying, strong physically. Um, and then you saw he took down Jorge, and he and he, uh, he defended the takedown against Nick Catone. And uh, you know he's a, he's a mixed martial artist. He's known for his boxing and you know his heavy hands and whatnot. You know, but but uh, boxing has its pros and cons. It's got good stuff, but then it's got a lot of really bad stuff. You know, especially if you're a kickboxer like me um, and training with Anthony, you can you can exploit those differences. And uh, you know, but uh, I know that he's got he's big and strong and got heavy hands, and he's got some good strengths as well. Uh, and so we've trained accordingly. <laughs> well, I should hope so. How, how do you how do you see that fight going for him? Well, again, it's all about me. I care about myself more than Jared. <laughs> I'm going uh, in a fight when he goes. I'm more nervous, you know, myself when I'm going fight. And hopefully, he's going to win much easier than he usually does. Very nice. All right. Well, now let's turn the tables here a little bit and talk about your fight at UFC 141. You're fighting somebody that Jared has already fought. Unfortunately, it didn't go your way, which I'm going to get to. But um, so looking back on what on what Jared did against Gustafson and, and and what your preparation is, how do you see that fight as the, the what are the most challenging elements of his game? Well, Gustafson, of course, he's a good striker. He uh, got a long reach, and he's pretty accurate with his striking. And, you know, moving around, it's very important. And keep a distance, either stay close, take him down, or stay away from him. It's, uh, it's going to be very important. Yeah, what did you learn fighting him, Jared? Um, I know that fight was in Manchester, and I know you're not one to make excuses, but mm -hmm. you were kind of sick before that fight, right? He, uh, you know, Alex is his nickname, man. He's the mauler. <laughs> you know, you, you hit him, you cry. You know, I cracked him with a couple overhand rights with the, I mean, just like 30 seconds. You know, I cracked him, but he just, he, uh, you know, when he got me on the ground, he hit me and I fell over, and then he just just pounced on him. Like, he, he, he wants to come after me. He's a young, hungry fighter. Um, as a as a fan, like I'm a fan of his too, because I like the way he the way he fights. Um, super nice guy, super cool dude. We hung out after the fight, and uh, and at the summit and whatnot. But uh, I learned like yeah, he you, you hit him, he's still gonna keep on coming after you. You don't yeah. mess around. So so obviously you're working on punches and bunches and and a lot of just sort of being extra active against him. Uh, yeah, definitely. But uh, you know, ground game could be could be main factor here too. Mm -hmm. He's a big, big guy, though, like we were saying. I mean, he's going to have some height and reach advantage on you, know? Yeah, he's tall, but uh, not that tall. A little bit uh, taller than Jared. But, uh, for instance, Anthony, I think he's high, like Anthony uh, Hardon. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I'm thinking about logistically. I'm and because I'm not, I'm not a wrestler, obviously. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is it is it more difficult though to take somebody down who's tall, or does that change, you know, sort of the body mechanics and, and make it easier for you, more difficult? It depends. It depends how they use it. You know, you you can be can be harder, can be not because, uh, like for instance. Right now, for me, it's hard to take Jared down when he <laughs> learned his, uh, you know, defenses, and now he can use those uh, lanky hands and legs and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But if you don't know much about it, then it's actually easier because you know size and easier to to, uh, to take a person down like that. Right. So, how long have you guys actually been training together? It's been a while, yeah. Oh wow, yeah, it's, it's been a while. It's, it's been like six four or five years. years. Six years, yeah. Uh-huh. No, maybe. Yeah, five years for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what yeah. what actually even initiated you guys getting together? I don't really know the origin. Well, originally, we I think we met when I was uh, IFL days, and we were fighting for uh, Sabers, Tokyo, Tokyo Sabers. Sabers. <laughs> and actually, Jared was my, one of my replacement guys. You know, so in case yeah. I get hurt or something like that, yeah. he was in my weight, and then. Uh, yeah. uh, IFC approached me uh, one time to fight, but I was on a contract with IFL, I couldn't, so I offered to Jared to fight, and uh, that's how pretty much how it started. Yeah. Well, he, my, he's not telling the whole story. It was a, it was a 230-pound catch, or uh, it's called cruiserweight tournament, and he calls me, Jared, uh, how much do you weigh right now? I'm like 217, maybe 215. He's like, how close do you think you get to do 30? I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Why? He's like, there's a tournament and for the IFC, and it's at 2:30. I was like, let's do it. All right, and that was the first time. <laughs> first time when I think I made it to 2:20, yeah. maybe. Or waiting at 2:22 with my shorts on. <laughs> but uh, that was the beginning of the, the Vlad and Jared journey. Yeah, but you know, it was a good fight, and uh, yeah, he good. actually beat uh, Travis U, which is a good, good fighter, and uh, he makes actually decent money then too. So. Yeah, yeah, the first time. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> and then, uh, and how did you guys get hooked up with Anthony? Well, Anthony was going back from coming from Holland once in a while. He actually he lived close by where my place is, and we kind of exchange. Uh, he wants to start fight MMA, but he was a kickboxer, so he wants to learn wrestling and jiu-jitsu. And in exchange, he was teach us kickboxing, and you know. And little by little, he was coming like a few times a year, then three times a year, and then decided to stay here and got married. And yeah. and after he's slow down his fighting career but he become more and more a uh, trainer and a coach and you know work out for us very nice in fact actually you bring something up that I wanted to talk to you about you guys are are both relatively recent newlyweds r- respectively not married to each other but you're coming up on a year and you are about six months or so right? yeah almost seven months now. very nice has has that changed your attitude at all toward fighting or anything that you do in your actual fighting game uh, f- oh go ahead well, for me, absolutely. Uh, my wife comes first before anything, before fighting or before whatever. And if it came to a situation where fighting is over with for her, then, you know, so be it. There's nothing matters to, to compared to my wife. Uh, and so, you know, it obviously, when you have a wife and if the potential for a future family and whatnot, things change always. And your priorities change and, and you can't go off and do all these different things. You know, at least for me it was. And, uh, you know, so it's, I think it's great. I love it, you know, because uh, my wife is there. I get to come home. I have to worry about going off and trying to find, you know, going to the bar scene or do this or do anything. Like, be, oh, I got to find a girl. It's like, no, I got a great wife, and she's awesome. She supports me fantastically. Yeah, yeah. And for you? Yeah, for me, too. I think it works out pretty good. And, uh, you know, I'm more calmer person right now. <laughs> <laughs> I've been accused a few times for being uh, angry. And, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, uh, you know, it works out for me, too. You know, I'm... And my partying days over too, I think. Um, I like to stay home and, you know, we go out still and actually hang out all together. Yeah. And hopefully we're going to yeah. do, after my fight, you know, all the guys and Anthony and Jared yeah. for New Year's in Vegas. That'll be, that'll be cool. Well, we should say she's a, she's a hot Brazilian. <laughs> you did well, my friend. <laughs> that was a plan. <laughs> and Jerry's got a, you got a looker. She's a nice American yeah, girl, right? Hey, Miss Big Bear. Absolutely, absolutely. Bear, so. yeah. <laughs> that, that's terrific. You know what, it's just, it's interesting. You know, I know a lot of guys are always talking about oh, our camaraderie and our, we're great friends, but you guys really do hang out a lot together. You've invited Kamal Shalaris as now part of as part of the crew as well, and you guys are just kind of grown a, a great little team here, yeah? 
Yeah, no, absolutely. It's uh, you, like I said, you get to meet. It's all Europeans, though. Like I'm the only American. It's kind of funny. That's true. Only he's only American. <laughs> only true. only American. We have Iran, <laughs> Russia, <laughs> Holland. Uh, uh, yeah. So it's cool. You get to meet. You know, in our, in our little crew, we just uh, it's just cool. We have so many different backgrounds. You know, Anthony's background, Vlad's background, Kamal's background, and just uh, it's just cool. And we're all we're all. It's, it shows you how MMA can bring people together from all different kind of walks of life. Yeah. And uh, it's awesome. It's phenomenal. No, I can't believe I didn't mention it already. That stash is, is <laughs> just <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So what's the story behind it? Uh, well, stashbash.org. It's uh, it's to help benefit. It's not Movember. It's to help benefit uh, Higher Heroes USA and Soldiers Angels. Um, uh, Soldiers Angels helps current military, and then Higher Heroes helps uh, veterans find jobs um, uh, through Brian Stan. Brian Stan's one who started it. <clears throat> so we have this ridiculous itchy mustache that I get laughs at from my wife all the time and her uh, so if you uh, and Vlad's part of it too if, uh, if you go to stashbash.org stash feel free to donate please very nice what do you think of his stash it's awesome it's a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> I think you had it before who yeah. get uh, his wife was not going to get married <laughs> yeah, just, I'm just uh, waiting for you to go could you pull the car over ma'am you, you know you just need the glasses uh, license ma registration ma'am ma oh yeah no I've got uh, I've got all the, co the comments Chester the cop yeah <laughs> <laughs> It's great. And you are feeling right, great, right? I mean, you had a little injury. You're coming back. You're feeling good? Yeah, definitely right now. I feel much better than before. Uh, it's always happening. You never know. And uh, my Believe thing me. is I have to take care of my body. I have to stretch and think and promise myself go and do yoga. Mm -hmm. And... <laughs> I should have started doing it a long time ago. Right. Well, and that always does beg the question with you, uh, how long you think you're going to keep going? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> I'm looking on the, right now at uh, you know one fight at a time, yeah. and we'll see how I feel after this fight. And you know, I'll, right now it's a great time for me to fight. And like I tell anybody right now, it's good times for MMA. So for me to quit right now, it's kind of like uh, I don't want to do it. A long time ago, I almost quit. You know, and for a few years, and I was thinking about quitting for sure. But now MMA is so big and then so popular that that I want to keep going and keep going until I can do because I'm really enjoying right now actually talking to media with you guys much mm -hmm. much different than mm -hmm. a few years ago mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what actually that's funny I'm, I, I meant to ask you that if there was ever a fight that either of you had that made you second guess and go uh, maybe I shouldn't keep doing this anymore do you remember exactly which fight it was for you exactly I kind of quit or slow down after my fight with Arlovsky mm -hmm. I broke my hand and you know I couldn't do what I need to do I had to do surgery and my son was going through school and I was thinking you know what maybe I just slow down and MMA at the time was not very popular sport because I couldn't go PTA meeting and say who I am everybody would look at you like oh kind of weirdo and you know but uh, <laughs> but you come back and then now it's uh, I never thought it's gonna be that big and uh, and not necessarily big but also People look at you like a heroes, not just like a weirdos, some kind of guys. And uh, MMA guys, fighters change a lot too. You don't see no more, you know, crazy looking dudes. Uh, they all, if you go to the summit and MMA summit in uh, in Vegas, and all the, you know, either people like in an elevator in hotel were complimenting us, like, are you guys really fighters? And like, so it's. Really, really be proud of that crew. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And yeah, for you, because you were in Elite XC, I mean, you've been doing this for a while. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You're still young, but yeah, has there were, were there times where you thought, ah, why am I going there, out and get beaten up for living? There, has there been a time <laughs> where I wanted to quit? It's just when, when Elite XC went under yeah. and I was held for seven, it was before the Alexander fight, actually, mm -hmm. and I was held for like 17 months. I'm like, dude, am I ever going to, like, I'm not going to think about something else, like, because of, you know, career and I, was, I had a college degree I'm like what am I doing you know but it wasn't a sense of like oh I'm broken or I'm done it's just more like dude like what is what are the opportunities and now like like Vlad's saying like with the UFC and, and the UFC on Fox and mainstream and, and w working out with the fans and checking it out it's uh it's getting much much better uh, as far as career wise so um yeah for sure. do you think John is gonna be able to defeat Lyoto <laughs> well, it's a tough call. I think he's definitely capable of that. But Leoto is a good fighter. He just have to step up and, you know, turn a fight on. Mm -hmm. I think he's uh, capable of physically doing it. He mm -hmm. just need to step in and put the fight together. But you know, I don't want to take sides. <laughs> they, they both cool, they both cool guys, and I think it's going to be a great fight. 
But but you know, looking back at that fight. I think your right arm was free. I don't think you were fully crucifixed. And I think a lot of people think that you could have kept fighting. Uh, yeah, definitely. And my right hand was free, and I was going for a guillotine to sneak out and do it. But, again, I was in kind of bad position for a little bit too long. And John's take advantage right away. He didn't waste any time and then just... You know, throw his elbows and you know he got it. That I'm not blaming him. Shoulda, woulda, coulda, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he, he he's a good learner and pretty much he beat me on my own moves. And he was, I think he was watching the tapes and he's like, oh, Vladimir does this. I might as well try it. <laughs> you no, know, it's a kind of cool move, you know. <laughs> it is a cool move. It is a cool move. Well, I don't know if you're ever gonna get that fight back, but it'd be nice. It'd be nice if you could have another chance at him, huh? Yeah, definitely. But again, I couldn't wait to see what's going to happen with him, first of all, uh, with him and uh, Eliota. And I'm glad I'm going there and I was going to watch it live. Yeah. And, you know, after my fights, I, you know, I, I'm taking time, you know, uh, one fight at a time. I'm not going to plan, you know, 10 fights ahead. Right. Well, and also we should say, I mean, because you used to train with Lyoto. A lot of people, I don't think, know that. When we were in Toronto for 129, we were talking about that, and I don't even think people understand the, uh, the background that you have in Brazil and everything and how well you know Lyoto and, and the fact that you guys even train together. Yeah, we train together actually for a few years, a uh, few times a day. Yeah. <laughs> so I know him pretty well. I know his wife and family, and uh, they're cool. And uh, like I said, he's physically very talented. He just needs to, you know step up and bring that fight to John's. Nice. nice. Very nice. And we're going to be able to see your, your fight on ION, yes. which as I was telling you before we started rolling is like the, the rerun channel, I think. But it's great <laughs> because because people see it. People are aware of it. And, and, yeah. and you know, it's going to be, it's, I think they said 100 million homes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I believe you're the second fight on that ION card. So around about 4, 4.45 on the West Coast yeah. time, I guess we'll be, that's when you'll be up up and up and at it, right? Right after Texas Walker <laughs> Ranger. Yeah, exactly. Whatever it's called. Whatever it's Walker called. Texas Ranger, what the heck is it called? Chuck, uh, the Chuck, Chuck Norris sh sh yeah. Shrug Show. <laughs> that show. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, yeah. thank you for taking the time. And last, you, you look at like you need to say something. Nope. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> no. No. Okay. I love. I love it. It's just been the the spiritual reawakening of Vladimir, the kinder, gentler, media yes. friendly. It all started when we just started doing shots together. That was the beginning of it, wasn't it? That's what it was. Right. Exactly. That's, uh, you know, bonding. Bonding. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Taking credit for it. Well, guys, thank you. UFC 140, Jared Hammond versus Costa Filippou and 141, Vladimir Matyshenko taking on Alexander Gustafsson. Both of you guys, I know you're going to have great fights, and, and thanks for taking the time. Thank you very much. Thank you.